There was a rich man named Jack. He was a married man. His wife was a pretty woman. Her name was Clara. She was Jack's secretary. Clara came from a quite poor family. However, Jack didn't care about the social differences between him and Clara. This was because Jack was modest and simple, despite his wealth. Jack fell in love with Clara the first time he saw her. It was love at first sight. Jack was indebted to Clara when she rescued him when he was about to go bankrupt. She was smart, wise, quick-minded, and intelligent. Jack admired Clara's distinguished character greatly. He wondered how a girl from a poor family could be as rational and down-to-earth as she. After a long time of thinking, Jack made his last decision to marry the girl. Jack was not hesitant. He was fully aware of the fact that many would stand against him refusing such a socially unequal marriage. Jack was brave, and he insisted on defending his love for Clara, no matter how. But he aimed first at making sure of Clara's feelings towards him. So he opened the topic with Clara. He began the conversation by asking Clara if she had ever fallen in love with a man. Clara replied that she never fell in love with anyone. She added that she didn't care about the idea of falling in love or being loved. She had no time for such happenings. All of Clara's main concerns revolved around working hard in order to earn money for her family. Clara revealed that her parents became old and that they were too weak to exert any effort. They retired early, so there was no income for them. At that time, Clara realized that she must do anything for her parents. She must help them and provide them with their needs. Clara was just a helpful and grateful daughter. She did not wait to finish her studies and search for work. Instead, Clara looked for a job quickly. Although she had no experience to do any job, Clara started collecting some knowledge by reading and studying until she managed to gain the experience that could enable her to do a good job with a decent salary. Clara was selfless. This was very clear when Clara spent all of her first salary on buying the medicine necessary for her sick parents. She did not take any tiny money for herself. So Jack interpreted from Clara's talk that she was a girl with no love experiences. But she was a girl who dedicated both her time and her money to her family. She was a girl of values and principles. Jack observed that Clara was polite and decent because he never saw her talking with any male co-worker. At the company where Clara was working, there were a lot of workers who expressed to her how much they loved her and how much they wished she would converse with them, but she didn't care about any. Yet the only man for whom Clara had some nice feelings was Jack. Finally, Jack revealed his love for Clara. He disclosed to her that he felt that he was the happiest person on earth ever when he looked at her innocent smile and heard her tender voice. Jack portrayed to Clara that his love for her was unique and different. Jack's mother died when he was young. She was a kind woman who was always kind and lovely when communicating with her son. Unlike Jack's father, who was tough and serious, Jack's mother was sweet and compassionate. Thus, after the woman died, her son Jack suffered very much until he managed to continue his life again. Jack stated to Clara that the most attractive thing he found in her character was that she looked like his late mother in various aspects. Both of them were kind, honest, emotional, romantic, tolerant, and forgiving. That was why Jack got strongly attached to Clara. Clara reminded him of his mother's kindness and unconditional giving. Jack commented that he could never live without Clara. Clara was astonished by what Jack was telling. She never expected that Jack, her boss, might fall in love with a poor girl like her. Finally, Clara was also in love with Jack. She thought that he was the man of her dreams. Clara admitted to Jack that his father would definitely think that she was a greedy young lady who planned to filter with a rich man to steal his money. Clara argued that she was sure that Jack's father would refuse their relationship. Jack comforted Clara, telling her that he would marry her in all cases, whether his father agreed or disagreed. What Clara predicted happened. Here's Jack's father threatening him, saying that he would prevent him from enjoying any money if he married poor Clara. Jack didn't consider his father's threat. He married Clara, and they were very happy living together. Clara gave birth to twin children. Their names were Joseph and David. Jack seemed extremely fulfilled by God's gift for him. The small family lived in quietness and joy for many years. After 20 years, Clara died. Jack was shocked. Jack couldn't believe that the woman whom he had loved for many years was gone. This caused him to suffer from temporary amnesia. This situation emphasizes the real intentions of both Joseph and David towards their father. Jack was getting old, and the psychological shock of his wife's departure made him forget most characters, names, places, and events.
So Joseph and David saw that they must run their companies and institutions independently of their father. They were selfish, self-centered, and conceited. Instead of bringing a doctor to check their father and give him proper medicine, the two evil brothers plotted against their sick father. They brought a hypnotist, and they asked the servant to put it into Jack's food and drinks. They wanted their father to be in permanent unconsciousness of what was happening around him in order not to feel any kind of disloyalty, treachery, or deception by his two sons. Unfaithfully, the servant, Daniel, betrayed his employer, Jack. Although Daniel had been Jack's servant for many years, he neglected Jack's favors for him and received them in exchange for money. The two brothers offered Daniel a large sum of money so as to get him to agree to reply to their mean request. Fortunately, Jack could remember everything after a short period. However, he couldn't tell anyone about that because Jack observed that there was something strange and weird taking place around him. Jack always saw Daniel sitting with Joseph and David and taking a lot of money from them. Jack was amazed as Joseph and David used to hate Daniel and asked their father to kick him out. Jack wanted to make sure of his suspicions and concerns. Jack understood that he shouldn't face Daniel directly, as Daniel would definitely lie, defend himself, and deny any suspicions against him. Hence, Jack had an idea of reaching the whole truth through Daniel's son, who worked as a barber. Jack arrived at the barber shop. There, Daniel's son, Terry, was sitting on his bad friends, joking and making fun of others. On reaching the place, Terry and his gang kept laughing at and mocking Jack because of his black skin. Jack was patient. He didn't get nervous or upset by those trivial boys' absurd, silly, and foolish comments. Alternatively, he appeared calm and confident. While he was sitting, Jack heard Terry say that he would be rich soon. Terry added that his father would bring him lots of money, causing Jack's heart to be broken. Terry said that his father took big sums from his employers, Joseph and David, who gave him a hypnotist regularly to make their father more unconscious. To everyone's astonishment in the barbershop, Jack left the place very quickly, with no introductions directly, after he heard Terry. Jack confronted his children and his servant with the whole truth. Joseph, David, and Daniel regretted their actions, and they apologized to Jack, who forgave them quickly. It's become very clear that treachery is an intentional betrayal of love and trust. It undermines the basis of human relationships and the social contract. It can be argued that the acceptance of treachery will lead to the acceptance of all other evil. Moreover, children must be taught not to be egocentric little creatures. They must be taught to share and to consider others. They must be taught compassion. When these teachings fail, we call them spoiled children, often because evil adults. Anyone who thinks children are born essentially good needs to spend more time in a nursery. One should be selfless. It helps conquer pride. Instead of acting out of a desire for acceptance, you can act out of motivation to do the right thing. While having no pride is not negative, it can get in the way of doing something that may put you in a position to be looked down upon by others. On the contrary, selflessness can help you expand your way of thinking and perceiving the world. Not acting selfishly allows us to have a sense of dignity or have more money or power. In addition, a person should respect and remain faithful to his parents. They gave you life. You owe them nothing and everything. Your choice, but I lean toward unconditional love and positive regard over all else. Honor them and respect them. You can respect them and thank them for having you, raising you, and setting you up in the world. As they got older, their greatest satisfaction may have been seeing their children become useful members of society. This would make parents happy. Try to stay out of trouble and try not to cost them a fortune. As a last reminder, you should stay loyal to your beloved ones. Being loyal means being faithful with all your senses. It's a special quality that only a few people have. There's no reason for a person to be loyal. If your personality is balanced and you were well-raised, then you'll be loyal to everyone, not just your partners. If you were loyal to someone and they betrayed you, the only thing you could do was to stop knowing them or dealing with them. Never change someone's personality. Instead, change that one. Daniel should advise Joseph and David to stop being evil with their father instead of acting heartless like them towards Jack. Well, friends, that's the end of this incredible story. We hope, as always, that it's been to your liking. If you liked it, give us a like, leave us your valuable comment, share on your social networks, subscribe to our channel, and activate the notification bell so that you're always notified when we have a new video. And in this way, you don't miss any of our stories. For now, we only have to invite you to join us in the next one.